All right, good evening. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me for this very special College Rugby 102 webinar. Um, I've been doing a College Rugby 101 webinar for many, many years. Um, so I'm excited to kind of level up, you know, and kind of help you uh, and your family move on to, you know, kind of pass the basics about college rugby. Um, and then also, what are those next steps? What would that look like for your son or daughter? Um, you know, what are those little things that I continue to see over the years um, where students um, and families, you know, maybe make some little mistakes and I want to make sure that you get a chance to avoid them. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and share um, my screen and we'll go to a PowerPoint and we'll go from there. So hang on a quick second. And welcome to everyone who joined us live. I so thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to keep it like this just so I can see if there's questions. Um, so again, we're talking about College Rugby uh, 102. Um, and I am the owner and founder of the Ruggers Edge. So we are, I want to say, the only uh, college advising company that specializes just in rugby. Um, so really excited. We've been around for a long time now, and uh, it's really exciting to see how it's grown. And whenever I talk to families, um, just continuing to you know, see where rugby has has grown, you know, in those years. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share that. Hopefully it should pull up in a second. Okay, so just a little bit of background about me and, you know, obviously you can find out a little bit more if you were to go to my website, but as you can see, I have a, a long background um, as a professional college consultant, and then also have a long history with rugby, and first as a, as a player, then uh, as a referee, and then now as an educator. So rugby is definitely still something that's a huge part of my family. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, my family and I, we're based in Colorado, um, which is really wonderful, uh, as long as we're not buried in snow, um, but it's really wonderful. We're originally from California. Um, this is where we are now, which is great. We've got a lot of rugby here. Um, so it is a lot of fun for us. Uh, about the Ruggers Edge, um, it, you've already watched 101, so you already know what we kind of focus on. And that's just, uh, you know, being a college advising firm that focuses on those unique needs of rugby student athletes, which is why you guys are all here. So I'm very excited to be here with you. So this is what we're going to talk about. I don't know why that went backwards, so apologies. <laughs> we're going to go through um, a, a recruit questionnaire breakdown. So I'm going to share one with you. We're going to kind of talk through what that looks like. Some of the things that I would, you know, kind of point out for you to take a look at. We're going to look at a rugby resume breakdown. Um, make sure you all kind of start thinking through like what your resume says. What are some things that I would make sure that you include? Um, and then also how to stand out at an upcoming camp or a tournament. And then some common pitfalls, how to avoid them. And then obviously some Q&A. So first thing we're going to talk about is a recruit form breakdown. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Okay, and then what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to oops, close out of this. I'm actually going to pull up the live one. Um, hang on a second. Bear with me as I'm changing screens here. Um, so what we're going to do is look at a, uh, a live form. Where did it go? Apologies. There it is. Okay, so this is the Queens University of Charlotte. This is their website. So if you didn't know how to get to this, uh, you know, this page or any of the varsity teams that you're looking for, um, basically I, I Googled, you can look up Queens Athletics, you know, or Central Washington University Athletics. It would take me to this page. So this is one of the first ways I know that, that it's a varsity program is it actually is listed here under, you know, there's men's sports, there's rugby, there's women's sports, there's rugby. It's, you know, not listed over here, right? Actually, it is listed over here. So that's a little confusing. Here, let's look at the women's rugby program. All right. So what we're going to look at is the prospective student athlete form. And actually, this isn't going to pull up now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thanks for bearing with me. This is not the form I wanted. Let me go back. Here's the form that I wanted. All right. So let's take a look at this prospective student athlete form. 
So generally the prospective student athlete forms at most colleges will look the same. Some of them will have some different questions that they ask for. Um, ideally, what I would tell you to do is probably fill this out no later than for a first contact, beginning of your junior year. Um, if you are sitting on your freshman or sophomore year, if you're really interested in the school, you could always fill it out. Um, there's not really much they can do with you um, this early in the process. But obviously this stuff is all pretty, you know, pretty standard, right? Your name, your address, email. Now I do wanna point out whatever information you put on here, especially the email, you wanna make sure you're putting an email that's gonna be checked, right? So if I am a student that never checks my email, A, this is the time for you to start. Um, I know many students get overloaded with emails and they never check it. If you're starting to fill out recruit forms, I've had some students create a brand new email that they're only gonna use for kind of college related things like applications, recruit form, things like that. So you don't miss these emails. Or what I want you to do is start really uh, making an effort to check your emails regularly, okay? So make sure all of this is uh, you know, up to date here, all of your information. Um, all, you know, this looks like a lot of information, but honestly, take your time, make sure everything is spelled correctly. This is not something I would want you to do on your phone and, you know, have some mistakes or anything like that. Um, if you're younger, if you're a freshman or sophomore, you may not have a, a grade point average. As you can see, this is, you know, it's not mandatory, so you could leave it blank. Um, however, you could kind of put, if you are pretty sure that at the end of freshman year, you'll have a 3.8 GPA, you could put that in there. Same here, if you don't have a test score, but you know you're planning to do it, um, if possible, and you'll see this will vary on different forms, you can put something like, whoops, not that one. Um, you can put something like planned March, 2023, so that they know that you're, you're already thinking about it. You know this is a test you're gonna take and you plan to take it at that time. And then when you get the score, then you can go ahead and share it, okay? Um, so academic honors, I get some questions about this, like, well, what, what does this mean, right? So academic honors, and you'll see this on a future application as well, but this is your chance to brag. And again, this is academic honors. So we're not talking about any, you know, uh, you know, rugby, football, any kind of sports related stuff. This would be something like, you know, place third in state DECA championship, right? Something like that. Um, you know, you could say like AP scholar of distinction, things of that nature, okay? Oh, sorry, and last one that's not, not easy, but one that uh, tends to come up will be something like Dean's List, right, or Honor Roll. Say Honor Roll, you know, like grade nine, 10, and 11, right? So all of these things are just for these colleges to start getting a sense of who you are um, and what, what you're like academically, okay? Now this one I get a question about all the time, other colleges that you're interested in. Now, you might be wondering why are they gonna ask this, right? So let's say um, you're in Colorado, right? Let's pretend. I'm in Colorado, I'm filling out this form, which is in um, Charlotte, North Carolina. If I list the colleges I'm interested in as Colorado State, CU Boulder, Colorado College, Colorado School of Mines, University of Utah, and then Queens. It does not look likely that if they decide to recruit me that I'm gonna go there because it looks like I'm mostly interested in staying kind of close to home or close to this kind of Rocky Mountain area. So I want you to really think through, you know, either if you're gonna list colleges, but make it clear that it makes sense for you to be filling this out, right? If, if this is the only college you have in this area and every other college you fill out is overseas, that really doesn't make a lot of sense to them, right? So they just wanna, again, have a sense of like how serious you are, where this college kind of falls on your list, okay? Of course, here, the primary sport that you're interested in, you know, you would select, you would select rugby. So let's say maybe we did women's rugby or men's rugby, right? So we're gonna select that correct sport. Also other sports. I think it is really, really well, um, it's well established that many rugby players, you know, play other sports um, and a lot of those, um, you know, athletic talents carry over to many, many other sports. So please make sure you include that, you know, make sure. And again, we're talking high school sports, but if you do basketball, if you do track and field, if you do water polo, anything, we want to include that again, it gives the coaches a better idea of kind of your overall athleticism, as well as your, your coachability. 
height, weight, pretty standard. But if you don't know, make sure you get that. You include your high school information and then also your club team name. Now, this is something. If you play for a team that's called the Tigers, don't just put Tigers rugby, right? Like I have no, I have no idea. There's a Tigers rugby in um, Summit County here in Colorado, but there might be a Tigers rugby in, you know, I don't know, Connecticut, right? So you could always say like Tigers rugby club, and then make sure you put, you know, if this is New York, New York, right? You could also, if there's room here, I would actually put the website, right? So it might be like New York rugby club.com. So they know which club you're associated with. Um, same with the high school team. If you just say like, um, you know, I don't know if I put Chatfield high school, there might, that's here in Colorado, but maybe there is another Chatfield high school somewhere else. So then you might want to go ahead and say Chatfield high school, um, Denver, Colorado. So then they know exactly where to find you, where you are located, things like that. Okay. So letters one in the sport, um, you know, basically they want to know varsity letters, right? So if you've been playing varsity and you're a junior, you've been playing since you're a freshman, you might say you, you've got three, right? You played freshman, sophomore, and now in this year, you're going to have a varsity letter, coach's information, um, coach's phone number, coach's email address. And then obviously it says position. So if you play multiple positions, I would list your primary first. So let's say you're normally a prop, but you can also play hooker. You can also play flanker and you can play eight man, right? So you can go ahead and list all of them. If you want to really break it out, you can say primary prop and you could say alternate hooker flank and eight. All right. So just, again, it gives me a pretty good sense. This is someone who's very comfortable um, in the tight five, right? Or at least it in the forwards, this is not a back. So that's helpful there. Uh, I'm going to pause for a quick second and just make sure if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me. Go ahead and put stuff in the question box. Okay, great. Whoops, sorry. Um, ah, go away screen. Okay. So career stats. Um, if you're a freshman, sophomore, if you don't really have anything here, you know, definitely you can, you can leave it blank, or this might be a good push for you to start getting some of those times. So that might be saying, you know, you have a, you know, if you have a max squat of 200 pounds, right. Or you have a beep test score of 12, that would be really good. You can say like, you know, most all time tries in state tournament, you know, eight, stuff like that, right? Anything like that, I really want you to make sure you brag. I have a lot of students tell me this part of the, the recruit process is very uncomfortable because they're not usually used to kind of bragging about themselves and they have to put it in here, right? So all of these kinds of things, all conference honors, you know, rugby doesn't normally have these. I think we're starting to see more of this in the college game. Um, but if you don't have these, you could just say like not applicable um, unless you have it in other sports, feel free to fill, you know, fill that out. Um, other honors, that would be something like, um, you know, if you, I don't know, you know, you won some award at your school because of leadership or because of your kindness, stuff like that, you could put that in there. Um, if you were MVP, most improved, um, for your team, you might go ahead and put that, um, in here as well. So team highlights in your career, this would be something like if your team won state, your team went to NAI, you played with Atlantis and you placed second at tropical sevens in 2022. So those would be team highlights that you're putting in here. So it's not just about you, but it's the fact that you were on that team. Um, and then you were able to um, kind of share in that success, okay? All right, any questions about that? So the recruit questionnaire, um, it, it's a starting spot. So it is not the end all be all. It is the first thing you're gonna do in reaching out to a coach, but that doesn't mean once you fill it out, it's done, right? So most students fill that out and they kind of forget about it. That's literally, it's, it's like applying for a job. You apply for a job, but you probably will follow up, right? There's gonna be more that's gonna happen. So we do wanna make sure that after you fill that out, we're gonna continue and we're gonna go ahead and follow up. Okay, so usually what's gonna happen after that? So let's say we filled out that resume today, it's January. 
Um, maybe next week we're going to go ahead and follow up with an email to the head coach. And we're going to go ahead and attach a rugby resume along with a, you know, a fairly short, but a kind email to introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Susie. I filled out that recruit form last week. I'm really interested in your school, especially because I'm interested in this psychology program. That's something I would love to do. Um, I'm also attaching my rugby resume um, and I'd love to stay in touch with you, right? Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at a resume, okay? All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. I didn't see any extra questions. All righty, so. All right, so you can find this template uh, on the Rugger's Edge website. Um, so you'll see this up there, you can download it. Um, it's just a template, so it's really for you to be able to, it just has some placeholders. It's a Word document, you can delete things, you can put things in there. Um, but what I want you to see here um, that's helpful, right? One of the things I always miss is the picture. So find some way of putting you know, your school picture, your team picture, something where it's a clear picture of your face. I mean, I don't want it to be a passport photo. I don't want you to look like miserable, um, but it's not helpful if I have a picture here of you, you know, I don't know, running down a field, but you're like in full uniform and in a scrum cap and I can barely see who you are. The point of having a picture there is so that if I end up meeting you at a tournament or a camp, I've already seen you. I get a sense of who you are. I'll remember you a little bit better. Okay, so if you're able to do that, I really highly recommend having that picture right there, okay? Um, make sure your name, again, address, all that stuff is up to date, your parents' information, again, your height, your weight, um, your stats. Now, you see here, I put it in red. If you don't have stats, delete it, okay? Don't leave this part here. Um, however, if you have them, it's, it's just added information. I wouldn't leave it off, right? So these are good examples of stats that are pretty standard that if you don't have them, I would really recommend you get them. So go out to a field with your, you know, your, your best teammate, your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, get that 40 meter dash time, right? Get a, a Bronco time or a beep test time. Those are all things you can download, put on your phone, put your AirPods in and you can go ahead and do it. At least you have a measurement, okay? Again, you're gonna notice what I like about uh, this resume versus other ones I've seen is the rugby information and athletic information isn't till the bottom. So really the whole top part is really your educational stuff. Okay, so yes, the rugby information is important, but, but ideally I need to see if you can be admissible first, okay? So we wanna make sure we include all of our high school information, our GPA, whoops, sorry. Um, and then if you had a test score, you might include it right there underneath the GPA, okay? I'm gonna try to get my little button here. Um, and then you wanna include your academic honors again. Uh, you wanna include your rugby coach. So here, it, multiple coaches. So if you have other people that can speak on your behalf and say, you know, how talented you are and that they've worked with you for many years. You might have your high school coach, you might have a club coach, you might also then have an all-star team coach, a sevens coach. I would include that information, okay? Make sure you include your rugby accomplishments, other sport accomplishments, um, have an upcoming schedule. So if you know that this, you know, this spring you're gonna go to, you know, you're gonna go to Rugger Fest and then you're gonna go to Tropical Sevens and you're gonna go to LA Sevens or something like that include that so they know um, if they happen to be that tournament, they can come find you, okay? And then also if you have video links, this is also where I would include it and this is where I would update it. Make sure you don't forget at the very bottom, you know, you know we wanna continue to make sure that coaches understand that you understand that you're going to college for the academics and that you, you know, have some sort of, you know, outside interest besides just rugby, so, you know, are there service projects you're involved in? Do you work? Do you do other things with your school? You want to include that. And then potentially if you have some college majors you're interested in, make sure that you include that as well. Okay. All right. All right. So let's talk about, we filled out the forms, we have sent out the resumes, and now um, we're gonna go ahead and attend a camp or a tournament. So here are just some, some ways that I would really recommend you think about before you um, go to one of these things. So number one, 
communicate beforehand. So similar to that resume, if you are going to a tournament, um, some of the tournaments will actually list what coaches might be coming, or if there's coaches um, that you've been in touch with already, you might go ahead and email them and say, you know, dear coach so-and-so, I'm going to be going to this tournament. If you're going to be there, I'd love to meet you um, while you're on site. Um, or if you're going to be at a camp where you know they're going to be there because maybe it's their camp, you want to make sure you communicate beforehand. Okay, so touch base with them beforehand. So I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Professional email, reach out, introduce yourself. Second, now you're on site, you're at the camp, you're at the tournament, you're walking down the sideline, you see that coach walking towards you. Oh my gosh, don't turn away and hide. <laughs> I know that it's a really nerve wracking for students when they see a coach, they're nervous or whatever it is, but there's a reason those coaches are there, right? They're there to meet you. You've already introduced yourself, hopefully beforehand. So once you're there, please make sure you go ahead. You can just say, excuse me, coach so-and-so, hi, I'm Susie, um, I emailed you. I just wanted to make sure to say hello. Of course, I'm, I think they'll say, oh, wonderful. How are you doing, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can say, oh, guess what? We are playing at two o'clock on field four. Um, I'd love for you to come watch me play right? Give them a little bit more um, information so that they know the, to find you. So this is that part of the process where you'll need to start being a little more proactive and not just wait for those coaches to come get you, okay? Now, you're at the camp, you're at the tournament, you're playing in games, you're playing in matches, those sorts of things. This is the time you want to show the best character you can. And of course, we want to show good skills, but, you know, I think tournaments can be hit or miss, right? Like it kind of depends on the, the team that you have, what pool you're in, things like that. Whether things are going great or things are, are not going great, uh, we want to see what kind of a player you might be in the future. You know, are you coachable? Do you take feedback? Are you rude to um, your teammates, to the sidelines? Like any of that kind of stuff really starts to become clear at a tournament. Um, whenever I've been to see tournaments or games live, Sometimes you know, players just kind of forget, like coaches are always watching you. So they're trying to see, are you going to be a problem when you get on their campus um, in a couple of years? Okay. Let's say you go and have a great tournament. It's awesome. You've already done all these steps one, two, and three. So now four, you get home, follow up with those coaches. Okay. Make sure you email them. Hey, it was so nice to meet you. Or um, I'm sorry that you missed the tournament, you know, whatever it is. I just wanted to make sure to touch base again. I had a really great game. Here are some links to the games, right? So if you're lucky enough that you had someone help you film or if the tournament itself was filmed, make sure to send that along as well. Even if they were there, it's really nice to kind of give them a refresher of like, oh, right, you were in that pool game against that team and you scored four tries, you know? So it's really, really helpful um, to just remind them of those things, okay? I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing just for a quick question. Um, I just want to make sure to check in with those of you who are on here. Are there any questions? Okay. Seems like everyone is, is doing good. Okay. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. So thank you. Okay, so let's talk about um, some common pitfalls, some things that I that I see often that college coaches will share with me and, and comment. So let's say you're really interested in a school and you never, never visit that campus, even virtually. So I point that out. I understand that there are some families, it is really hard, right? If you're on one side of the country, it's really hard to get to the other side, right? So even if you can't get there, I really, really highly recommend doing at least a virtual tour and at least communicating that to the coach. You know, I haven't had a chance to come out there, but I just did the virtual tour. I love seeing this, you know, this engineering building, or I love seeing X, Y, or Z. You, you do want to make sure that you're communicating to the coaches, you know, you're serious about this school and you're serious about the program, right? That you're not just kind of mass emailing people, that you're taking your time to look at this specific school with this specific program, okay? Number two, if you're not staying in regular contact, that's on you, okay? Coaches at this level, um, if they can recruit, 
typically even your, your biggest, most successful, you know, varsity rugby programs, they tend to only have a staff of a, of a couple folks, right? So like their main job is not going to be recruiting. Their main job is running a program, you know, making sure that their, you know, day-to-day -day practices and plans are in place. Um, recruiting is usually kind of a secondary or tertiary thing that they're focusing on. So if you haven't heard from a coach in a while, it is on you as a student to follow up. You know, hey, it's been a couple months since I reached out. I wanted to make sure to reach out and let you know. I just took the SAT. I got my score back and I got a 1350. Um, hope things are going well in your spring season. I'm looking forward to seeing you at camp this summer. Right. So I'm not asking you to send like novels to these coaches, but staying in regular contact is really the best way for you to stay at the top of their list. Okay. Similarly, number three making sure that you're responding to messages from the coach. So if the coach responds to you and says, hey, that's great um, that you got that score, can you send me a PDF of that score just so I can keep it from my files? Number one, you're checking your email because we talked about in the beginning, um, but you're going to respond to that coach fairly shortly, you know, within one or two days. And you're going to say, oh yes, of course, here's the PDF of my test score and send it back to them, right? So again, it's like a ping pong match. Like when they ask something, you got to respond, okay? Number four, inappropriate social media. So I have seen this more and more um, where students, you know, I'm sure students, if you're out there, you hear this all the time, but um, honestly, there are college coaches out there now that um, they, they want to see what you're doing in high school, because again, we're assessing risk. We're trying to see what kind of a, a person, what kind of a student or athlete you are gonna be when you get on campus. Um, so think about, you know, from this point forward, you heard it from me, anything you're putting out on social media, um, if anyone can see it, it means a coach can see it. It also means admissions can see it. So we do want to make sure that you are being smart about what you're putting on there. Um, I've had, you know, I've heard stories of players, you know, after a game, they're on their social media and they're talking about how, you know, awful the other team was or the referee or how it was, you know, so unfair and just venting, venting, venting. Um, you might feel that way, but it might not look that great um, putting it out on social media to like put down another team or, you know, staff or anything like that, or your own coach. I've seen players put down their high school coach um, for not playing them. Um, and that doesn't look good. Okay. The last thing that I would have you focus on here, um, a common pitfall is not focusing on schoolwork. Um, you know, if you are more focused on figuring out um, how to, you know, how to work in your, you know, I don't know, your, your weight training and your fitness, I'm not saying that's not important, but that can't replace how well you're doing in school. So the priority has to be being solid and doing your work in the classroom first and then rugby. So rugby, you know, for many programs, it's really amazing that rugby can actually help you from the college side, but it can never overshadow the academic part. So if your academic um, pieces are really, really weak, um, there really is almost no amount of rugby talent that's gonna be able to lift you up um, if you're way below the threshold of what they can normally, you know, what they can normally take. Um, so just some resources here I'm gonna share with you. Um, we do have our updated uh, Rugger's Edge Playbook 2023. Um, that's available now on our website. Um, the download is available now. Um, the printed version will be available in about a week. So those will start getting sent out. Um, if you um, wanna keep an eye on that, I'll have that on the website. Um, please make sure if you're gonna be doing research for colleges, do your research. The Fisk Guide to Colleges is amazing. That's one of the books that I you know, really rely on to try to find colleges that fit certain students and their personalities and things like that. It's a wonderful resource. Um, please make sure that you do some test prep if you're going to head into testing season. Um, if you are going to do application work in the fall, you're not working with a college counselor like me, um, please make sure you, you know, find some, some resources to help you. The college essay guy is really, really wonderful. He has lots of videos. He has lots of tutorials online. I really, really love it. Um, so I would really encourage you to take a look at that. And then just connect with us. So we have a newsletter, we have a really active Facebook page. Um, so if you ever have any questions, please make sure to follow that and then uh, let us help you. So if you would like to find out more about how we work with families one-on-one, uh, -on -one, um, you can always schedule that free 30 minute consultation on our website. You just click on the work with us button and I'll take you to um, our booking page. And now we are gonna get to questions. 
Yeah. So kind of quick and easy here. Um, I was hoping um, if there were folks on here that might have any specific questions about what I said or anything about the recruiting process, um, you know, please make sure to type that in the Q&A. Give you all a minute to do that. Definitely see a lot of grade 10 and 11 here. So you guys are right in the middle of it, at least those juniors for sure. <laughs> Okay. Well, if I have answered all your questions, that's actually, you know, we're going to try to keep it. Oh, never mind. That's a good question. Um, one of the questions I just got is, is it important to have a website? Um, I mean, I'll explain. I, I feel like most of my answers are always, it depends. Um, I think if it's easy, right? If you're our, if you are capable and you're savvy enough to build a website and it includes all of your information, you're able to like upload links and all that kind of stuff, of course, that's really nice for a coach, right? They can just go to like suzyrugby.com and you can see all your information. Um, do I think you have to have a website? No, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think if you have your Google doc with your pertinent information and your links and things like that, and that's what you're sending to coaches, I think that's fine. Um, I've more seen something like if you have a YouTube channel that has all of your film and that's the link you send, that might be helpful as well, right? So then we're not clicking around to, um, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, Tigers rugby here, but then we're looking at, you know, the waves rugby over here or something like that, right? If you just have one YouTube channel, that's just Susie rugby's, um, all of her stuff, that would make it a lot simpler. Um, so I think if you are savvy enough to do it, of course, it's kind of nice. You can make it look pretty, um, but I, I don't think you have to do it. Um, so if that helps you think about that. Okay, well, if there aren't any other questions, I will let you go. Um, and I will send this out. If you have other questions, please feel free to you know, reach out. My email is just karen at ruggersedge.com. Again, go to my website um, for more information. If you need a refresher, there is a college rugby 101 um, that kind of dives through that as well. Um, and I will send this out to everybody. Thanks so much. Take care.